Welcome to our Kitchen Oasis. Today, I'm going to show you how to make gyoza from absolute scratch with the ingredients that you can buy from your own shopping center. You can make beautiful gyoza without any special ingredients. Stay tuned for the great freezing tips at the end. Hi, welcome to our Kitchen Oasis. Today, we're going to show you how to make gyoza from absolute scratch. Um, you can make your own pastry as well, and I'm going to show you on the different video. But today I am going to show you how to make um, the filling. So the ingredients, um, 500 grams of pork mince. And I use same amount in weight um, of Chinese cabbage and cabbage and spring onion. I'm going to show you how to um, cut the vegetables here. So basically you just chop in a really small pieces. So I cut in this way first. And then chop it in, in small pieces like this. So you can use that. Again, I'm chopping cabbage into small pieces. By the way, I've washed everything before I started filming, so it's all clean. And cabbage seems to give it a nice sweetness to it. And then some spring onion. It's from our garden. So I probably prefer to use a little bit more. I love a lot of spring onion in this one. And also, not traditionally eaten in Japan but you can actually add coriander as well and coriander I am not going to use it today but see the stalk bits here you can just chop it and put it in the um, mixture and then you can leave the leaves for when you um, for, for the sauce here I add 500 grams of pork mince, as I said. Um, same amount as the vegetable in weight. I'm going to add the flavors. Um, the, I'm going to chop the ginger about half the size of your thumb. You can grate it if you like. Just mince it. And if you don't like ginger, you can avoid this as well. I'm going to crush the garlic. I use five cloves, but again, it's up to you. You can add more or maybe just one if you don't like the strong garlicky flavor but i love garlic so i use five cloves again fresh is the best but you can use the garlic from the jar and 
salt. It's really important to have salt. I have half a teaspoon of salt. This is another ingredient I like um, very much is miso paste. Nowadays you can get miso paste from a normal supermarket but if you can't find it, try um, Asian groceries. They may sell it. And But you don't have to use this um, because you may not be able to find it. But I, I like it um, very much. It adds a bit of a depth to the flavour. And another ingredient is um, soy sauce. This is two tablespoons of soy sauce. You just mix it really well like this. You need to use your hand. Now it's nicely mixed. Now we've got the pastry, gyoza pastry and wonton pastry and filling ready to go. So now I am going to fill. So just a small amount of meat, maybe teaspoon, heap teaspoon into that gyoza pastry. Bit of water on top half and then flip it and then make those little pretty creases like this and then just press it down nicely sealed and wonton is a lot easier you put some in the center and again put some water on the top half and fold it let the air out and seal it like that and wontons usually boiled but I'm gonna cook it like gyoza so it's going to be the same thing, just a different shape. And I think gyoza pastry is slightly thicker than wonton because wonton's meant for boiling. And you might put it in the soup or something. So it's, it's different. So if you're making gyoza and um, not making the pastry from scratch, I probably recommend you buy gyoza pastry now I am going to make the sauce for the gyoza. I'm going to just chop the um, coriander, roughly. If you don't like the stalk, you can just use the leaves, but I like the stalk as well. So I just chop it quite roughly. And again, this is not very traditionally eaten in Japan, so you don't have to have coriander. Now, I'm going to put that in the bowl. And so two parts of soy sauce. So no matter what amount you're making and one part of vinegar or lemon juice. This is sesame oil 
um, to taste, a bit of a drizzle. Again, um, it's up to you. And this is chili pepper, um, again, to taste. You just mix it. And that's it. Gyoza sauce done. Now I am going to cook the gyoza. Um, heat the frying pan, uh, preferably non-stick frying pan. Um, reasonably hot. And then you pour probably half a tablespoon of oil. Just, um, a bit of oil. Um, any vegetable oil is good, but I like um, sesame oil for the extra flavour. Now I am going to place the gyoza on the frying pan. And one ton. It's exactly the same, different shape. Now I am going to put some water and lead on straight away. The pastry will cook nicely on the top as well because I'm not going to flip over to cook the other side so it needs to have that steaming happening and then after a while probably 30 seconds or so you can probably reduce the heat to medium so that it's not going to burn on the bottom Okay, I have been cooking seven minutes or so, and the water's evaporated, and it's got nice brown colour, so I think it's that ready. And the pastry looks cooked, the colour's a bit different. So just move a bit. I'm going to put, um, put it on a plate. Upside down. Now it's got nice crunchy bottom. Remember I promised that I'd give you the tips about freezing? Here at our Kitchen Oasis, we are all about giving you tips on how to make your life easier. Here's something I use all the time. Um, when you freeze the mince, I portion it to a certain amount, for example, 500 grams, and I label it, and I know exactly how much it is, so I didn't write down the amount, but if you freeze it, you just write down the amount if you like. And um, when you put the mince in it, you try to get rid of the air as much as possible to prevent freeze burn. And also um, put it in a nice thin um, pour, um, shape. And then, so it fits nicely in the freezer and you know exactly how much in it and you date it and you um, label it uh, what's in it so it saves room in the freezer 
and uh, it saves time um, because you know exactly how much it is. Another great tip for freezing the gyoza is that you put the gyoza on a tray separately, not sticking together like that, and then freeze it completely. And then after it's frozen, it's really rock hard, so you can put that into the Ziploc bag and then you can freeze it for up to one month. Um, longer than that, the pastry starts to get a bit freeze burned, so uh, probably up to a month you can freeze. And so that you can put a lot of effort once and then you can enjoy twice or three times. Thank you for visiting our Kitchen Oasis. See you next time.